enjoy this presentation and have a fantastic time at the fair in an hour. Uh, we will begin now with Olivia from the Savannah College of Art and Design. Uh, here, here's Olivia. Fantastic. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I am Olivia Anderson, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admission at the Savannah College of Art and Design, otherwise known as SCAD. Um, I'm incredibly excited to be here today with you, and thank you for joining us. Today, I'm joined by representatives from fantastic institutions rooted in preparing students to enter the creative industry. So we will be briefly introducing you to our universities before diving into the world of creative careers by exploring jobs, data and statistics, and tips for portfolio presentations. Um, so just give me one moment here to share my screen and then we will get going. Let me see here. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Perfect, and let me get this up. Okay, wonderful. Now SCAD was founded in 1978, and for more than 40 creative years, we've grown to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world. With campuses in Atlanta, Georgia, Lacoste, France, and Savannah, Georgia, as well as online via SCAD eLearning. From day one, SCAD has served as the preeminent source of knowledge in every discipline that we teach. The university is incredibly diverse with approximately 15,000 students representing all 50 US states and more than 100 countries. In fact, 25% of the SCAD student population is international. Now, career preparation is at the heart of SCAD's mission, as evidenced by the university's stellar alumni employment rate. 99% of spring 2019 alumni were either employed, seeking further education, or both within 10 months of graduation, with 91% in the creative field. Now, these extraordinary numbers are a testament to our talented and ambitious students, and they also speak volumes about the quality of a SCAD education. When you begin your degree, you are actively taking steps to progress your skill set and experience to support your career path. Now, we offer more programs of study and specializations than any other art and design university in the US, with over 100 degree programs across more than 40 majors and more than 75 minors. Now, this slide I want to pause on for a moment because this is where you can explore the true breadth of creative careers, because behind each and every one of these majors is a career path. So let's take a look at what it means to have a career in the creative industry. This is just a small sampling of the thousands of jobs available to individuals interested in pursuing a creative career. While you may have not have an idea of what exact job you would like to pursue, now is a fantastic time to take a moment and consider your skill set, your interests. What do you enjoy doing? What careers offer you the ability to grow and to be inspired while also ensuring financial stability? You may not know all of these career fields yet, and that's why taking the time to explore now is crucial. The creative sector has so many possibilities. Let's take a look at a couple individual examples. Tabish Ahmed is a fantastic example of someone who combined his seemingly conflicting interests. He studied computer science in Pakistan and found himself drawn as much to the aesthetics as to coding. So he decided to earn his graduate degree in interactive design which landed him a paid internship with Adobe. A few weeks before graduation, he got his dream job offer. 
Now at Google, he worked on several teams, including YouTube Premium Team, helping influencers make their videos more engaging, as well as Google Glass. Within a couple of years, Tabish was leading the new wearable technology group. He is a great example of how design and technology are reliant on one another. Another important factor in the creative industry to consider is its collaborative nature. Fashion designer Christopher John Rogers is a great example of this. He launched his line with Julia Wheatley, Alexandra Tyson, David Riviera, and Christina Ripley. Now, Christina is his business manager, David manages client relations, and Alexandra runs the studio. They all studied something very different within the creative sector, and now they form a team within the fashion industry. So taking a look at employability in the creative industry, the value of arts and cultural production in the US in 2017 was over $800 billion, amounting to almost 5% of the gross domestic product. The arts contributed more to the national economy than construction, transportation and warehousing, travel and tourism, mining and utilities, and agricultural industries. The US exported $72 billion and imported $42 billion worth of arts and culture. Now, prior to the pandemic, the creative sector was growing at four times the rate of the UK economy as a whole and experienced strong growth across all parts of the UK. Culture and creative sectors occupy a significant place in today's European economy by contributing to innovation, investment, digital modernization, and cultural tourism. The culture and creative industries generate around 509 billion euros per year, representing over 5% of the EU's total GDP and employing 12 million full-time jobs, which constitutes 7.5% of the EU's employment and the third largest employer sector in the EU. The US arts and culture sector runs a trade surplus of close to $30 billion that has generally been growing since 2006. The top arts and culture exports are movies and TV shows, creative advertising, arts related software publishing, manufactured jewelry, and arts goods. Over the past 20 years, consumers are spending more on admissions to performing arts events. As a share of total consumer spending, spending on tickets to performing arts events increased by more than seven percentage points in the past two years. Now, McKenzie and Company is an advisor and counselor to many of the world's most influential businesses and institutions. They ask the question, what is design worth? To answer this question, McKenzie conducted what they believe to be at the time of writing the most extensive and rigorous research undertaken anywhere to study the design actions that leaders can make to unlock business value. Their intent, their intent was to build upon and strengthen previous studies and indices, such as those from the Design Management Institute. McKenzie tracked the design practices of 300 publicly listed companies over a five-year period in multiple countries and industries and found that design-led companies had 32% more revenue and 56% higher total returns to shareholders compared with other companies. The value of a creative mindset and design thinking truly pays off, highlighting just how strong a skill set individuals have when they pursue a creative career. Now, with all this information and statistics about the creative industry in mind, I would be remiss if I did not address the global pandemic. While it brings uncertainty to many industries, creative career paths have the potential to help shape a new world. We've already seen the importance of creativity and innovation during the pandemic. Businesses that have been able to come up with ways to deliver services virtually quickly shift and quickly shift to new products have shown their resilience and adaptability. In a post-coronavirus world, we will need human ingenuity to invent, dream up new products and ways of working. Human creativity is going to be essential. 
The Creative Economy Report presented to the UN illustrated that creative industries have shown more resilience to the impact of a global economy economic crisis than any other traditional manufacturing industry. It is also interesting to consider how according to a recent study from the University of South Australia, the creativity toolkits used in the arts and in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are actually very similar. Fundamentally, both rely on being open to new ideas, employing divergent thinking, and maintaining a sense of flexibility. Caroline Norbury, CEO of the Creative Industries Federation, said it best. It is time to both imagine and engineer our future. We will need our creative industries to do that. They are too important to ignore. So who is hiring these creative individuals? Well, look no further than major companies across the world. Take advertising, for example. Graphic designers, mobile app designers, interactive designers, publication designers, art director, copywriter, social media director. These are all roles that are needed to successfully advertise your product, regardless of what this product actually is or what the industry is tied to. Let's take a look at a few more examples or roles and companies hiring for these roles. In animation, you can be a story and concept artist a digital modeler? How about a creative technical designer? And you can see that many different companies will be looking to these careers. Pixar, Nickelodeon, Electronic Arts, of course, Disney. Looking at immersive reality, this is anything from an environment artist to a 3D modeler, virtual reality engineer. And again, major companies are looking to this industry. You have Adobe, Facebook, Google, Microsoft. One more example, looking at interactive game and game development. You can have a web developer as well as a game designer, interactive designer, and social media developer. And again, we have companies like Sucker Punch Productions, Frog Design, and Google. Now to finish, I want to touch on STEM programs. Students and parents alike are often surprised to learn that there are many programs of study in the creative field that fall under STEM. This combination of right and left brain is a perfect fit for students looking to combine talents and interests. It is also a fantastic opportunity to extend what is called OPT in the US. OPT stands for Optional Practical Training and is an opportunity for students to work in the US for a certain amount of time following the completion of their degree. With a STEM major, you can work in the States for up to three years after your graduation. This is a fantastic way to work for major companies and to gain international experience in the field. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague. Thank you so much for listening. I'll stop sharing my screen now. There we go. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm very glad to be here with all of you today. We have about 10 minutes together. So what we'll do is um, I'll be very um, efficient as well, I'm trying to get my presentation to share. I have it on a different screen. Um, okay. Excuse me, everyone, I'm trying to find it. Hey, so my name is Mike Fekki and I am Senior Director for Admission and Enrollment at Parsons Paris and also AVP for International Recruitment at the New School in New York City and in Paris. So just a very quick introduction to the New School and to Parsons. Um, we have traditionally been ranked number one art and design school in the USA um, with these majors that you're seeing right now offered in the New York City campus. It's a very multidisciplinary um, school that is part of a larger university uh, with a liberal arts college, um, graduate, undergraduate, summer programs, and PhD programs as well. And we also have a full campus at Parsons Paris, where I'm located right now. 
uh, with those three majors that you're looking at. Full majors, uh, full accreditation, of course, everything is in English with the possibility of spending time on both campuses as well as summer programs on both campuses and of course online. So let's get directly to the topic of uh, our discussion today. Um, we have been, of course, for at Parsons uh, for more than 100 years. Um, we have been um, pioneering art and design education and also um, pioneering a curriculum that allows students to have a direct and hands-on experience from their very first year. Just a list of some of the notable new schoolers, um, some of the um, people who have um, studied at Parsons, whether in New York City or in the Paris campus. And those are some of the um, uh, companies, institutions, museums, brands uh, that regularly recruit uh, from our university. So I want to add a few um, more data points, and I guess this is these are just some resources that you may look at at your own time as well and explore. Um, um, sorry to interrupt you, Mike. Uh, so sorry, but your screen is not showing. Uh, if you could oh, okay. just uh, check if uh, uh, I need to see sure. it so we can go live. Okay. Okay. Um, can you let me know if you see it now? Um, okay, I have yep. it. Here we go. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Of course. <laughs> of course. Are you seeing it? Yes, yes, your screen is live. Wonderful, wonderful. So I just wanna add a few data points to what my colleague had just mentioned. The US, in the US, just in the US, for example, you see the um, amount, according to the US Bureau of Economic Analysis and National Endowment. And of course, this again, I just wanna to go to that disclaimer of COVID, this is pre-COVID. This is before the pandemic. Um, the, the creative industries um, and the arts contributed more than $700 billion to the US economy and employed 4.9 million workers across the USA. And that is pretty impressive. I have a link here that I may share with you after this presentation as well. That lists some of those possible jobs, the pays for different, the pay scales for different jobs. The UK as well. Um, in the UK, in case you're planning to study in the UK or go work in the UK or just for comparison reasons, um, the Department for Culture Sports in a report just before um, COVID-19 had also predicted that the creative industry would grow faster than any other in the United Kingdom. And by 2025, it would be worth about 128 billion British pounds. Uh, Europe, um, Creative industries are pretty, pretty strong in Europe, and they employ about 12 million full-time uh, workers. And there's a pretty interesting uh, report, if you just put on any browser you use, um, um, those keywords, you would be able to get that report. France, where I am based, where Parsons Paris is uh, based, um, Ministry of Economy and Finance has a report on the fashion, luxury, and textiles. And this economy, just this economy is worth about 150 billion euros in annual turnover, which is in terms of GDP, for those of you who are into economics, it's it's about two to 2.7% 2 uh, of the gross domestic product. And that's at least as much as all the autom automobile and aeronautic industries com combined. And in France directs, um, employs directly half a million people and indirectly one million. In terms of resources, any university that you may be interested in studying at or continuing your studies or exploring should have a section on careers, um, what sort of employment um, their graduates go to, uh, the sort of industries, uh, pay scale, geographic location, and any university should be able to provide you with this kind of information. There's an interesting uh, website I found called PayScale. It's a platform that tracks um, undergraduate school, salary potential uh, with a search function per category. And I feel that this is a resource, a resource that could be very helpful for you. Um, you may want to look at, uh, there's a magazine also called Forbes magazine with a section 
um, 30 under 30 that also now has, is divided per geographic regions. And this might be pretty interesting to kind of relate to people who are a little older than you are for sure, but who have not, who have gone through this trajectory not long ago. And you can see the kinds of industries, the kinds of creative industries that are there. Um, QS has a career advice um, section uh, that's pretty interesting. If you just go to QS education, higher education advice on art and design, what to do with an art degree, the different kinds of jobs that are out there. There's really a diversity of employment. Um, and then the European Union has several reports on um, creative industries. Uh, McKinsey, as my colleague has just mentioned, has some pretty interesting insight on that. College websites are a great resource. The Instagram accounts, believe it or not, if there is a university that interests you, explore their Instagram accounts. Is there student work? Um, do they have a job forum? Their career services post on Instagram. Uh, can you connect with them? Uh, these are all uh, possibilities and resources that should be at your fingertips, especially now, as universities increasingly we want to put everything that we're doing out there since most of you cannot be visiting uh, schools physically and meeting us one-on-one. -on -one. And as we speak, what's interesting right now is um, on campus we have um, a major, um, at Parsons Paris we have a major uh, job fair um, that is also taking place and it's pretty good um, coincidence. And I will stop right here. Um, please do come and see me at the fair if you have any questions. And We'll pass it on to, I'm not sure who is up next. Um, we'll hand it over to my next colleague. It's Valentina. <laughs> there you go, Valentina, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hi, hello everybody. So I will share my screen as well so we can start just uh, confirm if you can see it. Your screen is live, Valentina. Okay, great, thank you. So uh, just a quick introduction about me and my um, the institution I represent today. My name is Valentina. I'm the admission coordinator at NABA, Nuova Accademia di Belle Arti. We are an international academy of fashion, arts and design located in Italy. And um, especially we are located in Milan and Rome that are global capitals for arts, fashion and design. So uh, these two cities are really well connected with all the creative industry we have been talking about. And um, especially Milan is connected with um, fashion weeks, international design week, Rome is a global capital for art. We have important museum, exhibitions, art gallery, both um, classic and contemporary. So um, just to give you an, an overview about NABA, we were founded in Milan in 1980 and we are the largest private academy in Italy. We are fully recognized by the Italian Ministry of Education. And in both campuses, we have around 4,000 students coming from more than 80 countries. We actually have been ranked as the most international art and design academy in Italy. And all the programs are taught not only in Italian, but also in English. So we actually have a lot of international students attending programs fully in English. Our methodology is really um, practical. We are focused on the learning by doing. So we have not only theory, but uh, projects, workshops with leading companies. We try to focus on innovation and experimentation. And um, we have a really good job placement rate. As my colleagues were telling you, creative industry is um, Creative programs are really uh, strong for, um, for, for industry and um, we have the 92% of job placement rate and as a really uh, fresh news, we have been selected as the best Italian Academy of Fine Art according to QS rankings. So um, let's now talk about portfolio preparation. Um, 
usually portfolio is actually a requirement that is uh, asked by academies for application or um, in general for um, studying creative programs so i want to give you some tips and some information about portfolio so first of all what is a portfolio uh, basically portfolio is like a compilation of materials that give an example of your skills your qualifications your education training and experiences it provides an insight into your personality and creativity much more in depth than a simple resume that is just one or two pages because the portfolio is like a proof of what your skills are your abilities and most important what is your potential in the future so normally portfolios are used to plan and to organize and most of all to document your skills through some work samples and they are really it's really important and significant both to students but also um, for professionals in order to find new opportunities it could be admission for a university but also if you are a professional portfolio is needed for example to find new customers new clients or new jobs so it's really important to take it uh, seriously um, so how a structure of a portfolio should be of course uh, these are just uh, general guidelines then you can uh, follow your um, your personal style there's not uh, a specific rule to follow but general is a, a good structure should include a cover an index with the list of the contents that you are going to include the projects that should include title images and description it's always nice to have also a final page with a thank you page your contact details and links and it's always good also to package it together so not to do many different files but try to package it in one unique file and for example in the cover or at the end you can also think to put something that could be your uh, motto or like a sentence or an idea that you feel that represents you and your works that could be for example there are two things in life i need for surviving eating and breathing but only one for living that is design so what about the contents first of all i would suggest you to map the content so what projects do you have how many projects do you have in which order you want to present them you for example may want to choose to show your evolution so you may choose to put your most recent work at the beginning because they are the best portrait of who you are now but you can also choose to show your evolution so start with your oldest work up to the most recent works always also try to provide the context and show the development the process of each project so for example in the field of design you can start from the idea the starting point then include sketches technical drawings and if you have prototypes prototypes for fashion you can start from the mood board then include the color palette and the material selection then sketches technical drawings prototypes and shootings if you have them also try to answer the question why so what was your briefing your inspiration your starting point which problem you tried to solve with a specific project how many projects there's not a fixed answer to this question this is a very common question five to ten could be an average but actually uh, i think that the number is not so important if you have a few projects just try to present them in the best possible way with details and backgrounds and if you have many projects just make a selection of the projects you feel they are be the best also pay attention to the visual part because 
every visual choice makes a statement and people react to statements. So pay attention also on the style you want to, to give to each project. As you see some the images here, every image has a specific style, a specific uh, uh, language that wants to communicate a specific feeling. It could be uh, fashion, elegant, child, uh, classic or playful. So make also attention to the visual aspect when you present your project. And I would now like to give you some tips while um, you are um, preparing your portfolio that I hope uh, can be useful for you. First of all, first tip is to be yourself. So let your personality, your style and your direction come out in your portfolio from the aesthetic choices to your cultural references, the projects you choose, because the goal is to show who you are and create a unique portfolio that gives people an idea of who you are and what they can expect from you. Second tip is to add details on the creative process. So try to provide little details about the project, explain the main steps that you followed for uh, the projects you have done, uh, explain the development, how you did it, and um, give examples so that you can give details about uh, all elements that you think uh, could um, print some questions. Third tip is don't be afraid. So don't be afraid of showing imperfect work, especially if you are applying to a school, it's totally fine to still have gaps to fill or skill to learn. So just to be honest with the work you present. Just also, you can also ask suggestion to your teachers or to the faculty. And um, so, so don't be afraid for that. And also show off. So show off your skills, your project, even if you are not really sure about it or um, they are new and you have not finished, you have just finished that, just include that if you feel that they are a good uh, work. Last tip is to enjoy it, have fun while doing it, because it's a, a really great opportunity to show all your creativity, to show who you are. So really have fun and enjoy it. I will think, I think I will stop here to also leave um, time to my colleagues, uh, Maria, that uh, can um, go ahead. So thank you. Thank you so much, Valentina. Thank you, everybody. I don't know if you can see me. Um, I think uh, for some reason you cannot see me, but that's fine. Let me just uh, share my presentation with you. So hopefully you should be able to see that anyhow. Okay, I think you all should be able to see the presentation now. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Well, um, thank you everybody. It's so nice to be here today with all of you. So after all the run around the world that you don't, you know, we've been in the USA, we've been in Milan, in Rome, in Paris. Um, I'm taking you back to, to, to the United Kingdom now. So um, my name is Maria. I am a representative for the Arts University Bournemouth in the UK. Um, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about uh, us and about what we do. Um, so the Arts University Bournemouth um, is being established for quite some time now, over 130 years. We are a specialist institution, which means uh, that we only offer programs designed um, uh, related to art, design, media and performance. So very niche and very focused on, on what we do. Um, one of the things that uh, 
especially as universities do here in the UK, is that we mirror the work within the creative industries. So what we're trying to do is to um, follow a path with, way, with you across the, the three years you will be studying any degree program um, here in the UK to um, make you mirror the work and, and um, have the, the sort of a skills that the creative industries are going to be looking for in the people that are going to be going to work for those industries. Um, so everything is um, very practical and very, um, very focused on you to get the specialism that you need in order to get yourself a job within the industry. So our university is a creative community. We have under 4,000 creative students in one only campus. Um, and we have students from over 55 different countries and nationalities represented in, in, in Bournemouth. And we um, are the UK's top specialist art and design university in the Good University Guide 2021 this year. So very proud of that right now. And we are also the UK's number one specialist university for employability by the Times Higher Education in 2018, which means that in average for the last five years, 97% of our students are um, employed or in further studies uh, in what they study with, with us. And um, that's a really, really important percentage, especially nowadays considering in the situation that we are and where, where it's really, really important for students to ensure that they're selecting the right career path in order to get themselves a job. Um, the university is located in a very popular touristic destination in the UK, um, the city of Bournemouth. It's in the southwest coast of England. It is, is, is a city that it's uh, by the sea, so it's very, very beautiful, but at the same time, it's very well positioned within the UK. We are less than two hours away from London, so students can enjoy living by the, by the sea, but at the same time being very easy to reach from all the major cities in the country. Um, so you can see a map in there, so you can see a little bit where we are located and uh, how the city looks like and, and how the university looks like as well. So the same than the rest of my colleagues, um, we wanted to talk to you today, guys, um, to give you a little bit of insight about the creative careers and, and, and how things are looking like right now um, for careers in the creative industry, because it's something that any of you are right now about to finish your studies at school, you are planning um, on applying for universities, uh, perhaps this year, perhaps the following year, and you're starting to do your research. Some of my colleagues mentioned how important is that you start working on looking at career path, looking at um, job opportunities within the, the studies you wanted to do. So I, um, I put a few slides for you. One of them, uh, is, is this one future proof careers one of the things that people are very worried right now is what is going to happen with careers um, in the creative sector in the creative industry and creativity has become more important to the growth of, of jobs between now and 2030 um, than than anything else really um, in fact creativity will become one of the top three skills that workers will need to thrive in the fourth industrial revolution that you perhaps have started to, to hear about now. Um, but there is also this, um, this um, comments about, you know, what is going to happen with um, all those jobs are going to be automated and what's going to happen with it. And uh, I just playing there some percentage for you to get an idea based in the UK jobs, for example, only 15% um, of the jobs that fall into the creative industry actually are a high risk of being automated compared with a 32% of the non-creative industries job. And the reason for that is because robots struggle when they, they are tasked to, um, to do things that require complex um, thinking and complex um, a description of complex um, and, uh, and creative uh, um, tasks. And because of that, creativity is one of those uh, skills that um, workers will still need to be 
be um, having in, in the very, very future. So um, it's an incentive for you to think that creative industries, new technologies, new working practices are things that the industries in general are looking for at the moment. Um, and what an art degree um, can, can take you to, to go into, I think some of my colleagues put you some slides already to give you an idea of different jobs that you can get yourself into when you study an art degree. Um, so with an art degree, you can be so many different things. There are so many different jobs within each industry. So within the, the film industry, within the fashion industry, architecture, art, design in general, um, visual effects, animation. So therefore, it's really important that you understand the, the, all the career paths that you can take within one art degree. Um, and you understand and research um, what, what careers are really your focus or where you want it to go really in, in the future. And then analyze what art degrees are going to help you to get that job type that you're looking for. Um, and I'm putting here some top 10 industries from recent alumni, um, architecture, design, performing and fine arts, advertising, uh, internet and software, of course, movies, um, government, telecommunications, healthcare. There's some of the top 10 industries that we have currently um, alumni of, of ours that are going to go and work for. Um, but there is something that none of my colleagues have, have mentioned previously before, and it's also to don't forget about freelancing. One of the things that creatives um, um, have the opportunity to do as well is to develop their own freelancing um, companies and their own freelancing opportunities within the industry. Um, so it's, it's also really relevant if you are an entrepreneur and you wanted to look into that option that you also check out what freelancing opportunities you will have within the industry as well. And also, um, there are other companies that have in-house des design and art studios. So sometimes it's not, um, it's not very clear the, work, the type of companies that you could work, for example, with advertising and marketing. There is so much um, that you can do within the uh, advertising, marketing, PR, um, that may not be necessarily um, a, a marketing agency or a design agency. It may be other type of agencies that also incorporate this type of services within, within those companies. So worth it to obviously check out all of that. Um, and the same that some of my colleagues, I put in there um, alumni from the Art University Bournemouth are currently or working or employed by companies, galleries, museums and studios. Um, and you have in there some of the uh, names that um, many of you will recognize where we have alumni going into, into work for. But there are thousands and thousands and thousands of companies out there that provide uh, jobs within the creative industry. It will be impossible to, to put in one slide for you. Um, and I got in there for you some of the old alumni that is being um, part of the art university for, uh, from, from the 90s, the 80s, the 2000s. We have different students that have very, very successful careers within the creative industry and so many different um, areas from photography, filmmaking, television, makeup for media and performance, fashion, um, um, costume and design, um, graphic design, and many, many others. I'm sure that you recognize some of, of the names in there, uh, from the Hunger Games to uh, London Millionaire. So we have a really, really um, great amount of students that have been really successful once they complete their art degrees um, within our institution. So a motivation and a clear sample that, um, you know, to inspire you and to let you know that everything is possible once you complete uh, a degree. And I wanted to give you um, some inspire uh, slides just to finish. Um, some of our current students, so I'm not talking about alumni that 
graduate and they are very famous right now in the industry that they choose. Um, I'm talking about students that are currently still with us. We've got Zach LA, who is a second year a student from our BA commercial photography that has won the top prize at the Young Competition in Sony World Photography Awards in 2020, which as you all know, it was a very, very challenging year for everybody. So I'm um, very proud of this student and what he managed to achieve. And his work is done in collaboration with another one of our students from the degree program in makeup for media and performance. Um, her name is Rebecca Ross. And she did this amazing, beautiful uh, makeup for the photograph you got there in front of you. Um, and the reason why I select this sample is to give you an idea of something that a lot of the universities mentioning here today, but it becomes and is especially really important for the arts university boardrooms and is the collaboration. And I'm going back to when I was mentioned the mirror, uh, the work of the creative industry, all of the creative industries work throughout projects in collaboration with professionals and specialists from the industry. So that's something that in the school you probably hear all the time. You need to work as part of the team. Teamwork is extremely important. Um, in, in a specialist university, you are going to hear about collaboration. And the collaboration happened in our university across all of our courses. We are very lucky because being a specialist university, we only offer degree programs in art, design, media, and performance. So as you can imagine, our university is a hub of creativity all around. And it's really easy to find like projects where students from makeup and photography can collaborate together like this one here. But we also have a wonderful project where there is not just a couple of students, it's, it's many, many students getting together and working in, in, in amazing projects, for example, coming from film, visual effects, animation, makeup, photography, film. Um, and, and it's amazing what uh, you guys are able to deliver once you work through collaboration. And at the same time, you're learning in the same way that the industry works. So it's a skill that um, the company are going to be looking for. And one of the reasons why um, our employability rate um, in our university is extremely high because of that a way that the collaboration is, is embedded in our curriculum across all of our degrees. Um, this, this project that you got there in your screen was inspired by the TikTok logo, the color scheme of the TikTok logo, which I'm sure that you guys are super familiar with. And it led Zach into winning the Sony World Photography Awards for 2020. So very, very proud there. But we got a lot of many other examples. Um, I put in there one from Olga and Stephanie. There are two students, one from fashion and one from fashion branding and communication. They both won the 2020 Graduate Fashion Week Awards as well. When they were competing against over 5,000 other students, um, including five uh, finalists from the AUB. And you got there some of their remarks and, and, and comments about this, this experience. Um, Edgar Wright is, is uh, you probably will all, all know this, this film director, which is one of our alumni, uh, very proud and comes uh, from time to time to inspire our students and, and motivate them with, with a lot of the projects that he's currently taking. Um, and I wanted to finish um, in here with giving you some, some uh, testimonies of the students, but also to let you know that um, if you wanted to progress into the creative industries, there are um, first research on the careers pathways that you can take from any degree program. One of the, the top tips advice that I think not just myself, but many others of our colleagues here today have mentioned. Portfolio is extremely important to get you into any art university, regardless of what country you are applying for. And therefore, it's something that you need to um, look into detail. Valentina did a, a great presentation to give you some top tips about your portfolios. But be sure um, that you also check portfolio guidelines for any specific university that you wanted to apply for. In the case of the United Kingdom, 
any university will display the portfolio guidelines for you in their website. So I would recommend you to go to the website of the university, the course that you wanted to apply and check the specific portfolio guidelines because they're going to give you a specific tips and notes on what the, the course leaders, the teachers, the professors really wanted to see in your portfolio for an application. And I just um, put a slide in there just to let you know, we have a lot of questions from students from Europe, international students, um, about all the changes that are taking place right now and um, there are many of them asking about scholarships and bursaries and I just wanted to mention uh, that those are available for students applying for the Arts University Bournemouth. We've got many different scholarships and bursaries available and I will be more than happy to um, help you guys and to talk to you through any questions you may have um, I will be in the booth later on today, so if you want to visit me in there, happy to talk to you and answer any questions you go. So thank you very much for listening, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Um, now we will be uh, starting the fair. Uh, as Maria said, uh, all of the presenters today, as well as many others, will be in the booths. You can ask any questions you have uh, regarding this presentation or anything else. You can browse through the fair. There are many institutions. You can save your materials, save brochures, pictures, videos, um, anything you'd like to, and you will be able to review that in your backpack your virtual backpack and please reach out if you have any questions if you need any help we will be there at the help desk to help you out and thank you very much um, have a good event goodbye